last night. We never stop learning. And John mentioned our Charlie Green quote about being in school. It's so true. So if I can still learn something after 49 years of coaching, and I think I'm a pretty good coach, and if I can still learn something, that means that you guys should be picking up tons of information, sorting it into that brain, and helping out develop the game in Europe. And that's what, that's what I feel so good about, having so many. I look at this audience, and I see so many great coaches here. Guys that I've known for years, but also see I see young guys here that I haven't seen before, wide-eyed and listening. And that's so great. We have another great speaker right now, Steve Jackson, who I've known for years, former uh, national coach of the Netherlands team. You may know they have some good baseball in the Netherlands. Uh, and Steve's going to just talk about pitching for dummies. I'm going to sit down so because I'm a dummy. First of all, uh, welcome everybody. Good morning. Uh, I'm hitting fourth in the lineup. I mean, we had uh, we had base slow last night. I mean, spring had uh, hit a base hit, so we're leading one to nothing right now. So uh, I hope we can, I can get some RBIs, even that they don't count for the new baseball people around. Just take one step back. I mean, the name has been called a lot. Uh, er, uh, yesterday and today, uh, talking about Charlie Green Sr. Tom, how old is Charlie? You know, I'm 86 now. He's 86. He's 86 years old. Every time you go to the ABCA convention, Charlie Green, I mean, ABCA starts on Friday morning around 8.15, first speaker. Charlie is at, before 8 o'clock, he's in the front row in the first seat. And the convention ends on Sunday afternoon, around noon or something like that. And Charlie Green is still in the same seat. He's 86, 87 years old. Which means, it's one, I mean, he's one of the best college coaches and, and pro coaches there have been in the US. And this guy is still in the first row to learn something about the greatest game on the face of earth. So if he's, if he's in the front row, it will make me think, damn, I need to have a lot of front seats before I get to the same level as he is. And that's how I deal and how I go to every clinic. If I can pick up one thing in a clinic, it's a wonderful clinic for me. So, John said yesterday, like, hey, while we're doing these clinics, that, that, and that, and the last part was having fun and networking, having fun. I will add one more thing about it, and that's making friendships, baseball friendships, okay? I mean, and that's something that's lost a lot in baseball. It's friendship. Because we're all human beings. And it doesn't matter if you wear a black, a black hat or a yellow hat or a green uh, cap or a blue cap or an orange cap, whatever it is. I mean, I can say, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but it turned out one of my best friends, the guy I competed in, the guy that won the Lifetime Achievement of War last year, I mean, last <coughs> night. I mean, we competed against each other. Eh? It was always a final, Italy, Holland, this and that. I mean, obviously, he made only one mistake, Marco. You made one mistake. First game, we played against each other. He came, hand over the lineup. He says, hey, Steve, how about this? Okay, every time we play each other, loser pays dinner. Turned out, I never had to pay dinner. That's why I, that's why I retired. <laughs> that's why you retired. Okay. Okay, uh, Marco, thanks a lot for all the uh, uh, joy on the field and congratulations on your award yesterday. Um, take one step back and go to, uh, first of all, thanks the uh, EBCA 
uh, all the people, and I think we we uh, we don't really uh, see what's really happening behind the scenes. I mean, all those people from the AVCA making these clinics, uh, all volunteer work. Uh, those people put in so much work before and during and after, because when we leave on Sunday, has to, everything has to be cleaned up and stuff. Also, also, those people have to know. So just before I start, guys, just a little hand for all the people that work voluntarily for the ABCA. Thank you. Of course, one more thing, and then I'm really going to start. I uh, also want to thank uh, ISG for, uh, for having me and uh, being able to present you Pitching for Dummies which doesn't reflect to the audience. Like most of you know, I've been working now for 17 years now, so I have to make something up so they could understand. So it reflects to the Dutch more than it reflects to the Dutch. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, all right, pitching for dummies. First of all, a question for you guys. This is my question for you guys. So the question says, are better mechanics crucial to increase velocity? Yeah. Who's yes? Put up hands. Put up hands. Who says no? Put up hands. I see a lot of guys that didn't put up their hands. That's for sure. So I have like four or five that says no. I have like the majority who says yes. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Next question I, I fire at you. What's the most um, common pitching question uh, a pitching instructor or a pitching coach gets? Any idea about that? From his players, even if it's a, a coach from a club or a college or a pro or even just personal instruction. What's the most common question? How hard does he throw? The most common question, the pitching, the, the guy asks the pitching coach. How hard does he throw? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I can't throw harder. How can I throw harder? How can I throw harder? Why can I throw strikes? Why can I throw strikes? Anything else? I'll throw different balls. Excuse me? I'll throw different balls. I'll throw different pitches. How did that look? How did that look? Or how did she look? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay. How did <laughs> this is the most, the, the question that most pitching coaches get. How can I get more velocity on my fastball? So that's the question I ask you. How can I get more velocity on my fastball. One step back, earlier majority of you guys said work your mechanics. A minority of this group says doesn't make uh, uh, mechanics are not important to do that. What's the most common answer of the pitching coach or the instructor? Strengthen your arm. Strengthen your arm. Through long toss, typically. Through long toss? Okay, that could be an answer. The pro guys. Anybody else? Let's go. You're better than that, guys. Excuse me, and girls. Use your whole body. Use your body. See how hard you can throw throwing easy. See how hard you can throw throwing easy. Well, the answer is what most pitching coaches will say, work on developing good pitching mechanics first and velocity will follow. And that does make sense because the majority of this group already gave that answer <laughs> five minutes ago. But, which then begs the question, what are good mechanics? So that's my question to you guys. What are good mechanics? It's only one answer. The pure. Oh, wait, only one answer? Yeah. 
Why are we, why are we all sitting here? If we all, if there's <laughs> only it starts with an uh, easy answer, but it's very complex. It's pure nature of the biomechanics. Natural biomechanics. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Let's go, guys. I mean, we're all coaches. We all work with pitchers. Let's go. I mean, it's not. Don't have to be that I'm standing here and saying this is the way to do it, or this is the way I think you should do it. I don't think there's a good answer for that question because everybody has different mechanics. Correct, and that's what I want to hear. Different body, different size, different everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a different okay. Okay. So what would you, if you're saying that, <coughs> what would you say? Would for you be like good biomechanical fit? Or would you say there's n nothing compared with all those other objects go through phases that you need to do, like uh, okay. loading, ex uh, separation, uh, this part. Okay. And then so I'll look at my player and see if it works or if it doesn't. What can it be changed? So name one of those phases you think is important. It's a uh, balance. 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 Okay, anything else? If it doesn't feel natural, it would probably not good for you. Okay, if it doesn't feel natural. Okay, so if you have to force extension. it, it's probably not going to work out. It's, it might be a little bit more velocity for a while, but you'll hurt your arm in the end. So do we all agree there's nothing in common between everybody who's thrown? There, I mean, there are pictures who are similar. Of course, there's like the, the picture-perfect mechanics, but in my eyes, you have to... What is for you the picture-perfect mechanics? Whatever is individual for that person. Mm -hmm. There's, there's the, the, you have a book that says you have to get to a balance point, you have to use your legs, you have to break your hands at the right time, but depending on where your arm's set when you start, the point of break is different for every individual pitcher, which goes back to what's comfortable for him out of the set position. Mm -hmm. Does he stand sideways in his windup? Does he stand frontal? Does he have longer arms? Does he have wider shoulders? It's literally all individual to what his potential is and what's comfortable for him. Okay, but earlier my first question was, I asked, are mechanics crucial for velocity? And the majority of this group says, yes, yes, yes. And now everybody says, like, mechanics are not important. It's the individual. What is it? I think you're asking if there's any absolutes. Are there any absolutes? And I think the answer is yes. There's a lot of variations and style points and people are different and some people are longer and shorter and all those type of things, but I think there are some absolutes. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me, the, the body position at near release point is near almost <coughs> the same with every guy other than some tilt mechanics. So that would be one, for example, but I think your question is a good one. Right? We say it's important, but no one can tell you at all where we're trying to go, go to. And actually, I have you guys where I wanted to you guys because I knew this was going to happen. And I want you guys to think. And the same thing with your players. I mean, I was working at the, uh, at the academy this week and I was saying to the guys, hey, we're going to do that and that. I mean, it was more like pitching specific strength training and arm care type of stuff. And the first thing I said, guys, hey, it's not because I say it. If I say something, it doesn't really make sense. Also, your players have to be aware, like, hey, coach, Nice, but why are we doing this? That's something we as coaches have to do ourselves too. Like, okay, we're reading it or we're hearing it, and then we're like, okay, why are we doing this? Okay, I just put down some things you read in any book. I mean, what are good mechanics? I mean, for example, is tall and fall good mechanical uh, uh, posture? For example, pause at the stop. Of, I mean, at the top of your delivery, uh, achieving 
postural stability is that important, making sure that not, nothing happens into the footprint, people who are saying that's important. Another thing uh, a lot of pitching coaches say, go into a high cock position as soon as possible early to get on top of the baseball, uh, keeping your weight back, or do we just work the Newton loss? This could all be things, and these are all things that a lot of coaches out there are saying. Okay. Now, could it be that we as instructors, right, like, like it says, are attempting to do something that is actually virtual impossible? What I mean with that, are we trying to understand something <coughs> we can't see? Or are we trying to attempt to teach something we can't possibly teach. <laughs> what I mean with that is we don't have a clue how, how the nerve system works that are influenced in throwing a baseball. And we're still we're trying to teach something we actually can't see. So I think that's the first thing we have to change. I'm talking here about mechanics, which you'll hear a little later. I actually hate the word because I actually don't use it. Because for me, mechanics does not exist. Okay, later on, I'll tell you the right word. Connection problems are caused by the following thing. Because we make our pictures focus on location. If we take a seven-year-old or a young kid, and we put him out here, and we say, like, okay, hit that window, throw the ball as hard as you can to that window, and this kid, he will, whoop, he'll let it go, he fires it, and he will have him fun. Now, all of a sudden, we put a little red dot, which is going to mimic the catcher on that thing, and we're going to ask that seven-year-old, like, okay, hit the dot right now. What's going to happen? <coughs> Before he gets frustrated, it can't change. It can't change because he's focusing on something different. Correctly, he's going to have a different movement pattern. First, he's going to whoosh, let that ball go because he wants to break the window. Now, all of a sudden, now there's a red dot, and now there's a different goal. And the thing, the first thing he's going to do, the guy who's throwing it like that right now is going to throw it like that because he wants to hit that red dot on that window. It's the same thing with an older guy. It's the same thing with human beings. Problems in mechanics is because we let our guys focus on location. Another thing, and I'm big on that. We have too much. Every pitching coach you hear is like, extend, get extension, get extension, get extension. I'm not saying extension is not important, but the thing is that the majority out there is using the word ex, uh, extension the wrong way. And we'll get back to that a little later. Pushing off the rubber. Another thing that causes a lot of problems. Keeping everything in a straight line causes a lot of problems. Keeping sh uh, shoulders level at the same plane causes a lot of problems. Talked about Warren Span yesterday. I give you some homework. Go on uh, 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 Google, go on YouTube, uh, look for Warren Span, you heard that name before. Look who on Marichelle, Sandy Koufax, all those guys. Look at them and compare it, for example, with Nolan Ryan. For example, Juan Mar Marichal, Nolan Ryan. Who doesn't know Nolan Ryan? Everybody? Juan Marichal, you'll, you'll see that. First of all, Nolan Ryan, if you compare Nolan Ryan's mechanics with the perfect mechanics in the books through the years, that's almost one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, Nolan Ryan, he looked fantastic. He looked pretty the way he threw. I mean, later in his career, 
Kilometer shell was the opposite. I mean, legs, arms, everything was flying all the way. They both threw a lot. Who was the guy, and I'm, obviously I wouldn't ask a question, but who was the guy that threw the most walks in Major League Baseball history in his career? No, right. Who was the guy that threw the less walks over his career, average-wise, a game? Juan Marichal. So, and Juan Marichal was a guy, I mean, you'll see it on YouTube or whatever, he was a guy who was all the way like that, I mean, his leg was on that line. Another thing, land in perfect fielding position. Talking about a cue, talking about a cue, that's the cause of the majority of pitching injury is right there. Right there. Because you don't allow your body to decel a proper way. You don't allow your uh, uh, body to have the proper deceleration. To be right there, getting the perfect filling position. It's not happening. It's not happening. Look at all the pitchers. All the pitchers out there who, who play at a decent level, for example, major league, let them see how they throw. Nobody ends right here. How can you, how in the world can Chapman throw 106 and come to a complete stop right here? The same, actually you're asked for your body the same thing if you ask uh, a jet landing with the brakes of your bicycle. That's the same thing you're asking for your rotator cuff uh, muscles. <coughs> I think this is pretty clear. So instead of talking about <coughs> mechanics, I want to talk to you guys about movement. Movements are natural, mechanics are not. <coughs> Movement can be felt, mechanics cannot. If we want a player to make an adjustment, when is a player ready to make an adjustment? When he feels it. If he doesn't feel it, he cannot make any adjustments. So. If we want to make a change, we got to make the player feel it. Okay? And by the way, I have these things and just because it's a little reminder for myself and that's what I always do, also on practices. I mean, that's something, if, and that's nothing to do with pitching, it's just a side way I take right now. Show your players you're prepared. Show your players you're prepared. Every time with that, every practice I do, I put out the schedule. The schedule is out there in the in the clubhouse an hour before. I mean, an hour before it's practice. The practice is printed out, out there, worked out, so everybody can see what he has to do. Okay. <coughs> Don't be one of those coaches that come to practice and five minutes before you start, you go to where your assistants go like, hey, what are we going to do today? You know, this and that and that. Players feel it. Players are not blind. They're much smarter than you think. And it doesn't matter if they're 25 or they're 15 or they're 8. They see if you're prepared or not. Okay? Okay. Now, Mike, we're going to talk about movement. So my question right now is where does a movement start? Back to you guys. Where does a movement start? With the intent to grow. A intent of doing something? You can start right there. Okay. And then my next question will be, we all agree on that, doesn't give a signal, signal right here in the back of your mind, nothing going to happen. Where does the movement start regarding your body, body activity? 
Feet. Feet. Who agrees with feet? Nobody. Oh. Nobody agrees with feet. Oh, we got one guy. What? With the head. What do you mean with the head? You mean pitching wise. Yeah, on, on, when you're on the rubber already. Well, well, Wait a second. This, the I'm, talk, starts, I'm talking about movement. I'm not yet start, so talking about pitching. When the child starts moving uh, in this, uh, you know, Moving. Running. Running. Uh, uh, hitting okay. a ball. Yeah. Throwing a ball. Whatever. Where, where does movement start? Mm -hmm. Wait a second. You said with the head. What yes, do you mean what, with the head? What am I going to do? Yeah, but that's what I... That's right here. The intent. The brain. Okay? When he loves to do it. Yeah, but with the body. Where in the body? Which body part? The heart. Excuse me? Or, uh, or the heart? No, eyes. You said the feet. That's one body part. Okay. We're talking about body parts. At your core. At your core. Eyes. With your eyes. Hips. With your hips. Hips, core. Actually, it's the brain that sends this impulse to the muscles. Yeah, that's what's said earlier. That's what's said earlier. The brain sends impulse to the muscles and the muscles. Correct. Correct. But body part, like I said, the brain starts, correct? But then we go to the body. Okay? Body part. The brain, if, if the brain doesn't sense the impulse, nothing's going to happen. Correct. So muscle, that, muscles create movement. Yeah. Muscles create movement. Okay, so we have really, we have a couple, we have heard hips, we heard the middle, the core, we heard feet. Okay, well, let's test it. Let's test it. Okay, I need somebody up here who is a volunteer. Or would I get a Chinese volunteer? Let's do it. Volunteer right there. First of all, take them. Yeah, okay, give them, give them that. Security, your insurance. Okay, turn, turn yourself. Turn yourself. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you right here. You're okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, the thing is, Catalonia at this stage, you know, it's, this is more secure yes, than me. Than than you. These days. Uh, now, what I'm going to ask you is, take golf. Okay. One more time. Look, looks what happened. Okay. What did we see right here? What happened? He's not a very good golfer. <laughs> he doesn't golf much. He does golf much. What did we saw right here? Uh, the chair was rotating. <coughs> That's the first movement. The chair was rotating. Okay, that was the observation. The chair was rotating. Rotating. Which way was he rotating the chair? Counter clockwise and shoulders. Excuse me. Counter clockwise and shoulders. Counter movement right here. And when he turned that body that way, to the right. I mean, for you guys, the left hand side. The chair turned to the right side, the other side. Correct. Yeah. Okay. That's the first thing we saw. Second thing we saw. He tried to control his body. Excuse me? He tried to control his body. Tried to control his body? Yeah. But what could we see visually? The whole body was moving. The whole body was moving. Did we get an answer on this? Yes, you're saying yes. Where? It's the whole body that moves. It's the whole body. I think you have to re see it again. The resistance was, I mean, it was a in not solid platform, so the resistance started with the floor, but there was a chair. So your room, it was some kind of resistance against uh, non moving. I'm not saying you're wrong, but my question was, where did the movement start? And I'm talking about the real movement, the golf swing. With the hands? With the hands. Yeah, and it was beginning moving the hands. Oh, do that again. When it was beginning Don't moving. Don't do that again. 
Stand up. Stand up. Do again what you're doing. When it was moving like like this, oh, all oh, the oh. body was. A yeah. Yes. Where did it start? With the hand and the hips. Yes. Hips, or core, core, or core. And what you said earlier, feet. That's what we all think <coughs> that a movement starts from the ground up. It build up from the ground up. Absolutely not. And I was very pleased that I saw the, eh, the rotational uh, thing you're going to do tomorrow. Because all I'm going to talk about right now is the core thing on pitching. How important it is. Because movement starts right here. And by starting here your movement in your core, now it sends down the kinetic energy to the ground and it's just action, reaction force. The more energy you can put in the ground, the greater the reaction is, the more uh, energy we can create later on to throw a fastball. Like I said yesterday, we're not going to throw faster by moving slower. Absolutely not. Rotation is the key for throwing a baseball. Absolutely. Throwing is rotational. <coughs> nothing else is important. Almost nothing else is as important as rotation. It's virtual, impossible to convert linear movement into rotational momentum. <coughs> it's possible to create rotational into the sagittal plane, bending, and this is a sagittal plane, but this is not efficient, it's velocity killer, perceived velocity, pushing the baseball, upper body bending, forward throwing the baseball. What did I said earlier about extension? This is what we ask from players when we're talking about extension right here. Extension, if we want to have them extend the way we're teaching it, that's a velocity kill. What two components, I mean momentum components, are involved in throwing a baseball? You already have one. Which is the one already you have? Yes. No? Rotation. Rotation, that's one component. That's one momentum component. What's the other one? Which movement? We have this one. Now we need that one. How do you call, call it? Linear. Linear. Okay. We got linear and rotational. What would rotational energy gives us by throwing a baseball? Momentum, yeah. But what? Back to biodynamics, same like hitting, it's torque that produces the energy which follows then the kinematic um, chain sequences. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. But what? But the rotational, what does that give us? Power. On throwing? Power. Power. Rotation gives us power. Absolutely. So that's one thing we have. Rotational is power. Now we have linear. What would get linear gives us? Accuracy. Accuracy. Control. Command. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. So, if we're going back to this one right here, this is we're talking about linear thing. We're gonna have. We might have a little bit more. We might have a little bit more control. But what we're losing? Rotational power. Okay, so we don't want that. To throw uh, the right way, we have to, and that's why we call it mirror the slope. What's the slope? Okay, if this is a mount right here. Okay, this is the mount. Okay, home plate's right here. <coughs> plate's right here. This is a slope. This thing right here. 
Okay. The most important thing for our for the athlete is you have to mirror the slope with your body. How many times did we all try it? that outfielder that had the best arm in the team tried to put him on the mound? We all tried. What happened? They fucked up. With other words, it wasn't happening. Why? I mean, the kid was able to throw the ball on the line out of right field to home plate, throw a guy out on a base hit, try to score from second, he threw him out with a gun, he was out by miles. Now we tried to put that guy on the rubber, and he wasn't able even to throw the ball as hard as he was when he was in right field. Why is that? It's a different movement. It's a different movement, and the movement was he was not able to transfer it off the slope. So we have to find a way to use our body to mirror that slope. And that's the thing we're going to talk about from now on, now on till I'm done here today. The first important thing for me by mirror the slope is the pivot foot. The pivot foot for me the thing that should be on the ground would be this part of the foot right here, the middle of your foot right here, and we just go to children. They're trying to balance. Look where they put their feet on the balance pad. Why would that be? Why would they put it right there? Because, correct, they have the maximum stability. That's the most natural way for this young kids and the young lady out there to stand. But that's the same thing a pitcher should start. If this foot is already wrong, you already lost, I don't know how much, but a lot of percentage of your ability. So this foot should be right there on the ground, as stable as you can be. Not not what we all teach, but I did myself too. I mean, uh, uh, things, and then uh, it was hitting or whatever it was, and then we took like, a little thing or, or a baseball card and was able to go under the back of your foot. You were good, you were, your weight was on the ball of your feet, and this and that. This is the most natural way. That is the, most, uh, uh, the best way to get the best transport of energy. So your pivot foot flat on the ground. Now hooking. Not against the rubber, uh, whatever it is, or like that, or like this, flat on the ground. There's one thing, one thing you have to keep in mind, and it's already said, every individual is different. This is what we say is normal, but maybe. One of your pitchers has this type of foot, a pronation type of foot. So if this is the way his foot, his ankle is built, he can never be in this position. So he will be in this position. So it's more, like I said earlier, aren't we trying to teach something that's virtual and impossible? We have to know how his feet are, how are his ankles are built, or is he, has he this supination type of ankle? The way his joints are built in his ankle, and even a little bit uh, more hip and that type of stuff, that will tell you what his natural way is of getting to this point right here. And now you can just go, yeah, but I'm not, I cannot, I mean, what do I have to do? Take x-rays from that guy? And what do I have to do? Well. Just let, him, let your pitchers do this thing. If you do this thing, they will find this natural way of putting his foot the right way, and you see it immediately. In like a second, you see it. Okay, after the pivot foot. The next thing, you can call it back hip loading. I call it way more. Way more. What I mean with way more, 
If you were, for example, on a, uh, on a scale, I call it. Um, scale. Big scale. 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 Yeah. scale. If you're on a scale with one foot or two foot, doesn't matter. The one foot on the scale and you push really hard, what's going to happen? All of a sudden, you're going to go like 115, go like, oh shit, I'm heavy. And if you keep on pushing, keep on pushing, what happens afterwards? It goes back to normal, your normal thing, you know? So we want to create a situation that we want to weigh more. Weigh more, weigh more, weigh more. And that's, you have to find out. And first, you can let them feel. Uh, I'm working on it right now with force plates. I want to have that perfect situation from one guy to the other guy. One guy might be here. One guy might be here, the other guy might be a little more uh, down. But that's so important to get to that situation way more. And if we're going to see, back, first of all, back hip loading. It's not only pitching, guys, it's moving. Look at this tennis guy right here. It's back hip loading right there. Everything is back hip loading. If you see for pitching, I mean, if you see Chapman, Right here, I mean, I just put this box. It seems like they're going to sit on a chair on a box, okay? They're trying, they're on those, on that scale. They're right there because they want to weigh more. They want to weigh more. That's power right there. They're building up the power to get that in that rotational thing going on. I mean, in this thing, I mean, this says everything. I mean, any idea what this is? Dwight good. Why good? He sits on the same chair. Who's this? Called in before. No right. right. He sits on the same chair, a little higher. Who's this? Roger Clemens, correct. He's a little deeper. He's on the same chair. Who's this guy? Chappie. He's on the same chair. All of them. All of them. Even if you go back, way back, they're sitting on that same chair. They're the same chair. The only thing you see, one guy might be a little higher or a little deeper than the other guy. Another one from Ryan right here. He's right there. King Felix, same thing, but he's higher. You see, Ryan was deeper, King Felix is a little higher. Okay, k Rob, same thing. <coughs> Guys, it's throwing. It's throwing. Same position. Same position. We're talking. We're not talking pitching. We're, we're talking throwing. First of all, guys, pitching does not exist. Pitching is throwing. Pitching is only only the last ten percent of throwing. If you're on the mound, try to get the hitters out. That's pitching. Everything that happens before is throwing, just throwing mechanics. So that, don't try to make it too difficult. By the way, who was this? I don't know. Okay. Captain Excuse me? Frank. His name is Frank. Franks? Felipe Franks. Felipe Franks. You see? Learned again today. Okay, another thing. The next thing for me is very important. I call it uh, show the soul. What I mean with show the soul is right here. If you weigh more, if you weigh more, you see <coughs> Rivera sitting, he's a little higher. You see almost a bent front leg, but more important is right here. There has to be a situation, is it right here or later in the delivery, that either out of the third base dugout or your catcher can read what's underneath on your sole of your foot. That's what I mean with show your soul. Why would we need to do that? Well, first of all, I'm going to talk later from uh, uh, footprint from above. You cannot come like this if you don't show the soul. Okay, but we're going in later. Right here. Right here. Show the soul. Another thing is, if we're looking, for example, at King Felix, 
this might, might be even better. If we look at Kennedy, okay, he sits on that chair and has a almost straight front leg. Why would those guys use a straight front leg and not a bent front leg, going like this? Stimulates rotation forwards. Excuse me? It stimulates rotation forwards. It, it stimulates rotation, yeah. But, a little step back. They lose their balance if they don't work. Correct. It's just a counterbalance. If I'm going to sit and I keep this underneath, what's the next thing I'm going to do? If I'm going to sit and I'm going to bring this in, what's the next thing going to do? I have to make a counterbalance because if I don't do that, I fell over. There's just a balance thing. By doing this, I'm going to be able to stay straight right here. Okay? If I come higher, this one comes with me right away. It's just counterbalance. If you, if you don't have that, you fell down. And the thing is, for pitchers who are going to sit and would do like this, they come in this situation right here. Right now, they're all locked up. They cannot move. Okay? So, I must say, it's not only one of the greatest guys on the face of Earth, but he's also one of the guys I like the most, the way he throws. <coughs> okay? Just, and if you know his story, people who don't know it, I mean, can we play for us in the 09? Um, uh, WBC as a catcher, he threw a, threw a couple of guys out from the knees, he came back to the Dodgers at that time, he was a catcher, he couldn't hit, he couldn't hit shit, he was a guy that struck out four times in a row of a batting team, he was that type of guy, went back to the Dodgers and the Dodgers said like, hey Kenny, you're going to make a picture out of it. He goes like, oh, okay, well, you know, whatever it takes, you know, I want to stay in professional baseball. So. The Dodgers at that time, they went, I mean, coordinator went to uh, Charlie Huff. And Charlie Huff, working for the, uh, for the Dodgers as pitching coach, said, Charlie, Kenley is going to be your project. Your project, I mean, you're going to make a picture of it. So they told Kenley, okay, starting from tomorrow, you're going to work with Charlie. So Kenley walks up to Charlie, and you're going to start, Kenley all pumped up, and goes to Charlie and says, Let's go, coach. Tell me, what do I have to do? So Charlie Huff said, Kenley, I'm going to mom. You see that guy right there? You said, I mean, that was the, your spot yesterday. You go to mom, throw 20 balls to that guy. How do I have to do it? Charlie said, like, you know what? Throw 20 balls to that guy with the same intent you throw that guy out at the WBC from your knees. So Kenley started, throw 20 pitches. Go, coach, what do I have to do now? He said, come back tomorrow, we do the same thing. And that went on for a week. Kenley was never taught by Charlie Huff not one single mechanical thing. What you see right here was natural, natural way of moving. So what I'm saying is not only because of the story, but he does a lot of things good. He has some things he could do better. That's something we're going to talk in part two. Hey, one more guy right here. How about this right here? Is he showing the soul? Yeah, he is. Okay. Are those shoulders level? <clears throat> Absolutely not. How about this guy? Showing the soul later. I mean, if you see Koufax, if you see Janssen, they're like early in the delivery. Oops. If you see Berto Colon, it's late in the delivery. He's showing the soul. If we go back to the uh, American football guy, same thing. He's showing the soul. Because if he's not doing that, he's not able to get the footprint from above. 
he's not going to be able to go in this position right here. Okay. And another thing I wanted to add, uh, address to you, you have to rotate your ribs into footprint. There's nobody in the world, there's nobody in the world, just, I mean, somebody said it earlier, same, throwing, uh, hitting, it's the same thing, throwing, I'm not going to go on, on ice and talk about um, hitting with springing the ice. I'm not going to talk about anything about hitting. The only thing I want to say is, if we go in any baseball stadium, and you're going to be with your back against the wall in that center field, and you look at home plate, okay, that's a long way to hit a bomb in center field. The only thing I can, I'm going to say about hitting, it's not going to happen if you're going to swing like this. One, two. It might happen if you go like, boom, bang. And what do we all teach? It's right here, and now we're going to throw it. No. If your pitchers, if your pitcher doesn't have this, your hips open into footprint, you're done. You're losing energy. You're losing energy. And everything comes on this and this. Okay? I think I have to stop right here. I have a little break, uh, especially for myself. <laughs> uh, take a... We got 20 minutes. So 20 we're back here at 11 o'clock, right. which means you're in your seat at 10.58. So it's not 20, it's actually 15. Precisely. 12 minutes. 12 minutes. 12, 15, 20. We'll be back at 10.58. Make sure you grab a raffle ticket.